Hi there, this is Chuck with Pocket Snakes. I thought I would give you, show you the process of putting the overlay on. So this is the <clears throat> the first of a matched pair. So there's three fingers, three fingers, three fingers, and then four fingers. For the first add-ins and this whip tapers all the way up but it's 32 plate and it has a nice it has a nice roll <clears throat> the tails ended up longer than necessary but i'd rather uh, it have the tails it's always better to have more than <laughs> Not enough, and this is barred cemented in place to lock this down so I can cut all these off. But <clears throat> I didn't get to shoot any video before of this, so uh, just because I got busy and it was noisy. And so I'm starting off with red is three times the length of the overall plating on this, which is the entire length of this snake whip. And so there's the first strand. I need two that are identical in length. And I've got to strip out the core. This is 275 paracord. So it's got five inner strands. The nice part with this method is that you're basically measuring off the strands as you go. So you don't have to pre-cut anything. You don't have to worry about grabbing the wrong pairs. <clears throat> And I have a hook on the wall. So you shuck it back a little bit, tie a stop knot, and then tie the two stop knots together. And then you split these pairs of five. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to split it this way. That way it's, as you're pulling it, you can check it on down. And this is a useful tip if you have a lot of material like I always save this but I don't really make much out of it because I've never found too many good things to do with the nylon core. If somebody out there wants a bunch of hanged up nylon core let me know. But this is called burritoing and it allows you to quickly deploy in this case, 10 strand lengths. So, I try and do stuff with minimal waste. Sometimes leaving longer tails on the whip gives you material you can use for other things. So sometimes having longer waste pieces is more beneficial. Um, so this is a four foot whip and just so that you're up to date, <laughs> three times four is 12. So these strips are 12 feet long that I'm starting the plating with. And I hook the center roughly over the hook and then pull to get the center bite and then 
I do a square start, so I cross it this way. And lay it up where I want it. And start a four plate. And I don't crank down on the start of these a whole bunch. I do shuck them up and seat them with a little bit of tension, but you want more tension down the whip than up the whip. So. And I'm lining my plating with down here so that as I go, all the breeding will be in alignment. <clears throat> so you'll notice right at three fingers, there's a sheath here and then another three fingers, you're coming over the top of this sheath. So, so as the diameter bumps, now you can create smoother bumps by having these sheaths further back, but I'm doing these as identically as I can. So they should end up within a 16th of an inch overall in length and within about five grams of each other, which is about as matched as you're going to get. And I try and lock the tension so that the tension is the same between both whips as best I can. And this is, this camera is set up just over my head and it's tilted down. It's a little GoPro. This is a GoPro Hero 11 Mini, which is nice because I can put it someplace where I want it. And it does just fine as long as you're doing 4K video. You move it up to 5K and turn on stabilization and it overheats in about, oh, 15 minutes in a 70 degree Fahrenheit room does just fine, I'm sure, if you're out in the snow or if you have a lot of wind moving. But when you turn off the super stabilizing algorithm and drop the resolution just a touch, the camera doesn't have to work so hard. Okay, so I'm going to pin this because this is right at three fingers. We're going to bring in black and I will always measure this off the first two strands <clears throat> as I go and the black strands will end up a little longer because <clears throat> they're further down. kicking the kicking the camera that would be good I've never found a great way to get the camera where I want it where I'm not having to dodge the tripod if I attach it to the to the big tripod then anytime I move or pull on the cord it moves the light and it would also move the camera So these aren't quite 12 feet, but they're pretty close because we've only braided about three inches. So the other thing is you're measuring stuff that's stuffed with <coughs> inner strands and then you end up with slightly longer just simply from the nature of it being stuffed. 
So. So 275 paracord sheathing is two and a half, three millimeters wide and compressed is about a millimeter thick. So when you're doing plating, whatever the inside diameter is, you end up with about four millimeters more. So each layer of 550 cord or 275 cord yields a, about a four millimeter diameter increase. I'm just going to hang up this material. Anyway, like I said, if you any of you want a whole bunch of <laughs> hanked up 12 foot long paracord guts. Let me know. I buy 650 cords so I don't have to shuck it, but the 275 I always have to shuck it. But it's easier to shuck 12 foot pieces than 100 foot pieces. Anyway. And then I'm going to take and run this over the hook and find the center bite. Now these, I'm going to tuck right underneath and fold back against the stem and I'm going to lift them up and insert them. So this goes here and then the red one has to be on top of the black one and this one is under the red. <clears throat> and it sort of lost this black one, so I'm going to push it back into place. Okay, so the last strand went up, so this one. You have to remember the new strands you're adding, you can't really pull on yet because it's not tied to anything. One nice thing is this adds uh, this adds uh, a, this makes the whole end of this whip float on the core, <clears throat> so you can always kind of shuck it back, and you could pull it, shuck it down maybe six inches, and then throw it a couple times, and it'll reseat. Okay, so come on the inside of that. So that one's not tied in anywhere, so you have to be careful with it. You can snug it down a little bit. One nice thing, you can pull this cord out of the way and it'll behave itself. Yeah. 
Now you can just snug, sort of as you usually would. So we've got three fingers up here, we need three fingers down here. So we went from four to eight, the next jump will be eight to twelve. Everybody does stuff differently, so take with it, take from these videos what you will. This is one way of doing it, it's my way of doing it. <clears throat> I like the way these whips roll and how they behave. So there's two plated bellies in the core or on the core after a spiral, double spiral wrapped bolster. <clears throat> that video is up. You can go look it up if you want to see the whole build process for the core. I think putting the two bellies in <clears throat> just to one, well, I think I did it on just one of the whips. It's like two and a half hours. So I use whip maker cord in the bellies of these because it's half a millimeter or quarter millimeter compressed and it's just a touch wider than this material but it's less than half as thick and it allows you to create finer tapers <clears throat> pack the tension in where you want <coughs> okay so from where the first strand gets added to the bottom of the back, which is where my fingers are, we found where we got to add two more strands. So I'm just going to snug all these down. 10, 15 pounds. Just black which is on a spool over here so I can just peel it off so I use square grid and long long rack hangers again I'm just taking to the end of the red not to the end of the black so as to be less wasteful I usually shorten and do one of these at high speed and post it if you just want to kind of get the gist of it. And then if you want to watch the full process, I try and just put the full process up as I shoot it. Sometimes I have to cut the audio depending on who's home and what they're doing, what they're talking about. And some days I have real quiet and I'll just post all the audio too. Of course, you'd have to enjoy listening to me ramble because I hate <coughs> watching <coughs> videos with no audio.
try this little burritoing technique. It works real well. You can pull on this end here and smoothly pay it all out even though you've tied the other end off. You can also braid the burritos as you go if you're dealing on really long whips. You can also rubber band balls together where you can put <coughs> rubber bands around the center and it'll still pay out because of the the way that's laid in there. Rubber bands are nice because you don't have to retension them to keep the tension in it. So I'm going to add two more, so then we'll go from 8 to 12 right here. Sometimes it's useful having colored strands, because you can make sure you lay the new strand into the right bundle. It's a red and two black. And then it'll be red and two black. And see how these kind of pooch out the top. We switched under three over three. We've got red and two black and red and two black. And that's the pattern you want. And then later you'll have red and three black. <coughs> Anyway, you'll have to play. This pattern's a real simple pattern, and it creates rings. I like it. There's lots of patterns. Lots of people do all sorts of different cool pattern work. And I forgot. So if you pull on something, I've got it pinned down here. But if you ever want to know if you've got it in the center, you can always pick it up and recenter that strand <clears throat> before you lay it down. So the strand points that way, so we're picking up this side. And then that strand is there, so we're laying this one right next to it. And you'll create less bumps when you <clears throat> lay it neatly. So now we're back to the top and we have double double, which means we can really, we can snug these down as we go without any danger of <coughs> losing where they are in place. So. And I can't say enough about how important it is to not over tension the very tip because <clears throat> you want it to 
it will be looser, but you don't really want to crank these down until you're a foot in. And then you can really bump the amount of tension for this design. It will tighten up as you throw it, but you want it to float on that core, <clears throat> which helps it be fluid in that part of the whip. And the thicker the core is and the more layers, the less flow you'll have. So this whip will stay away from your body because it's got two hand plated bolsters. So. Or two hand plated <clears throat> bellies over a spiral wrapped bolster, double spiral wrapped bolster. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Check out the other videos if you like what I do. Please like, share, subscribe. Try some of these methods out. Make your own whip. There's more work that goes into these that I make than most people ever get to see because I don't really shoot that many videos. <clears throat> Although I've started shooting more hours of video. In case I get hit by a bus, somebody wants the information of how I did stuff because they really liked the results of what I was doing. You can watch the whole process, mistakes and all, me unbraiding stuff, tearing my hair out as I forget something, or invert a strand or whatever. So, not the fastest at this, but. I enjoy it. A lot of attention to detail. So we're back down at the three to the back of the cross from where it was added. I'm going to tension it back up. <clears throat> because I'm doing a match pair. I'm going to double check that <clears throat> nine inches into the other whip, three times three, is where we went to 16. When you braid one end, it unbraid it braids down below too. Okay, so let me check the other one. So yes, nine inches in. And we're at 16 plate, which is a really fast taper, which doesn't look very fast because it isn't really obvious why. <clears throat> and you'll notice the black strands are all about the same length, but they're measured off the red strands, and that's the difference of having it stuffed when you measure it versus after you got it I find it easier to de-spool from a thousand foot spool of black and then shuck two parallel strands you know, two at a time than it is for me to pull out a hundred foot or two 100 foot lengths and spend 20 minutes shucking them and adjusting them and all that jazz. So there's a lot of things I do to save a little bit of time that doesn't impact the precision of what I'm doing. It just gives, saves me a little bit of time on things that don't matter, so I have more time to spend on what does.
Anyway. <clears throat> One useful thing is when you get down to where there's a, a loop under tension, it's got a dip in it, you can flick it off the end of the hook so that you can get it off without having to run over there. It might be useful to some people. And I always encourage people, please come try some of the ways I do stuff. And if you find cooler, faster ways that are better, I'm always open to it. And always share your ideas. The world needs more people making wicks, not fewer. It's kind of a dying art form. Okay, so we're going from 12 to 16. This is just one way of additive building. two, three black ones, and the red one's got to come next. One, two, three black ones, and under the red one, so we've got four and four. So now we're into a 16 plate whip maker court whip maker plate. Okay, so there's our two strands. One's attached and one isn't. <laughs> In this case, the attached strand is highest. And on the other side, this one is not attached. So it's going straight through is what that means. The red one is always, because <clears throat> it goes all the way up, you can always <clears throat> safely pull on that one. But for the first pass, you have to make sure, like these top two ones are attached, probably. Nope, they're not. The very top one is not. So it just goes right through, because that's the new strand. And these two are attached. And this is, <clears throat> you don't have to add them four at a time, but if you don't add them four at a time, you'll lose the ringed pattern where the rings come together. So if you want all your rings not to touch all the way down the whip, you have to add four strands at a time, which is a bit of a trick. And it works better with finer plating and finer material like 275 than 550 because you get quite a bump in <clears throat> 550 because it's very hard to smooth it out. And I talk way too much, but I don't have anybody to talk to while I'm doing this. So I'm talking to the camera because you're the reason I'm doing this. If you're watching the video, especially if you're still watching this video. So I'm going to bring this 